Um, so what we have here is uh, a notebook where we'll just kind of walk through uh, the steps for the normalization for that uh, microarray expression uh, data set I shared at the end with our um, BG1, NIEHS, BG1, FR, and MCF7 cell lines, uh, where we'll take the steps of loading in our data and then performing each step of our normalization. Uh, so first of all, we've imported our uh, plotting and uh, mathematical libraries here. Um, and, that. and then we've also this defined the stats method so we can see the minimum, maximum um, standard deviation and mean values for our matrix at each step. Uh, what we're doing here in, the, in this first cell is loading in our data from Geo, uh, where we'll take this matrix uh, that's downloadable uh, and start reading it at where the data actually begins. Uh, so we got this matrix with our 18 samples uh, and uh, 45,015 transcripts uh, as our rows. Uh, and then we can actually see, again, how these how much these values differ. Um, what we can do is also add a uh, We can see our stats for our raw data. And this again, we'll see our range of values from 0.994 to all the way up to our um, 117,000, and sort of again just how unevenly distributed those are. Uh, then we can go through and apply our log uh, normalization to that raw data matrix, uh, where now we've accounted for that variance in very small and very large values, uh, which is reflected in our stats here. Uh, again, now, now we've got this distribution from just over zero to uh, a maximum of 16.84 uh, with our distribution that we saw earlier on the slides. Uh, and we'll create some plots of to see it here. Uh, here we're defining a z-score um, function where rather than taking in our uh, gene specific or our transcript specific uh, means and standard deviations, we're looking at the population as a whole. Uh, this is less useful because it won't shift our distribution at all uh, overall. It'll just look at the, um, we'll just be changing the scale of our values. Uh, so instead of looking from 0 to 16.84, uh, we'll be looking at a scale of, say, like minus 75 to 100, where we're looking at uh, how far each value is from the mean for the, for the overall matrix. These cells as well. We get our stats here. So again, yeah, we're looking at a distribution of minus 73 all the way up to uh, 94. But we'll see in a few uh, cells when we actually take a look at that histogram of the distribution, the shape hasn't changed still. Uh, we've also got our gene-wise z-scoring, which again we've discussed will give us this more normal distribution uh, where we can see the z-scores for each gene individually, uh, which is only ranging from minus 4 to 4, uh, with centered on 0 as our mean, or almost 0. Uh, this is our quantile normalization cell. Uh, we have some of these, um, a, a lot of these normalization methods have already been implemented somewhere, so there's uh, no need to sort of reinvent, reinvent the wheel. Um, but sometimes you may need to shift the format slightly, uh, such as in this case, uh, where I believe this takes in some sort of uh, NumPy array and it's been adjusted to take in our pandas data frame instead. Uh, but essentially, we'll go through that same process where we make our ranks uh, for each column get our uh, ranked distribution, and then substitute that back into our original matrix. These cells will get this matrix as an output uh, where we've quantile normalized our lock transform data. Uh, and again, we're looking at this range from 1.2 up to 16.37 with our slightly shifted distribution. And again, for median polish, uh, this has already also been implemented uh, and we don't need to reinvent it again. Uh, but essentially, we'll go through a number of iterations, um, and we'll pull out our, col our row effects and our column effects, and we'll iterate through that process until we're done. And then we'll return our residual matrix, and then also our overall row and column effects, uh, if you want to examine those more closely. So in addition to our residuals, we also get those numbers that we saw in, uh, with our example. Which would have been on the top, top left corner and the uh, left side and the right and the top side. And again, our stats uh, will be pretty much centered almost at zero here, 
uh, with a distribution from minus 14.5 to 14.28 on the upper side. Uh, then we'll actually visualize our results, uh, taking a look at the distribution of our log transform data. Uh, again, we see this more useful distribution than just our rock counts. Uh, if we look at our whole population z-score, um, again, this, hist this histogram is uh, essentially the same as our log transform data, uh, but we're looking at a different uh, scale here on our x-axis uh, where our z-scores have been calculated for the whole population, which again is not especially useful. Uh, so what we'll do instead is uh, also apply our g and y z-score and see our distribution is shifted here. Again, our quantile normalization distribution, our peaks have been smoothed out a bit at the, at the extremes. Um, and for each sample, we'll be looking at the same distribution, uh, which we'll actually see in a few more cells once again. And again, our median polish, we'll, we'll see this nice distribution centered almost at zero uh, with our range of values here, our residuals. Uh, finally, we'll take a look at the different, uh, different distributions before and after normalization for each of our values or for each of our methods here, uh, where for our GNYZ scoring, uh, we can see on the left here, we got this um, distribution for each sample that kind of resembles our log transform data um, for our log transform data. And then after we applied, applied this GNYZ scoring, we got some more varied distributions uh, for each sample, um, reflecting kind of the range of uh, gene Z scores that are present in each one. Um, Again, this sort of difference is why this might be less applicable to um, differential expression analysis steps that take um, our distribution equality into consideration. If we're trying to perform statistical tests and assuming that these distributions are the same when they're not, uh, we could, again, get some incorrect conclusions. Uh, in contrast, here we have our log transform data and then our distributions uh, for our uh, quantile normalized data. Where here we actually see all of these samples align really nicely, uh, so we can move forward with some statistical testing in this case. Uh, and then finally, our median polish distribution uh, for each sample, we shifted this distribution where we have where we're centered on zero and have some uh, some difference in our ranges here, uh, but also some difference in our peak sizes. Um, so yeah, uh, this is essentially a notebook that we can walk through for. Uh, chaining together our, our steps where we do our log transformation and some other transformation uh, to take this into account. Um, you can also play around with this data. You can shift which uh, geo study you're looking at and import a different one. But some of these uh, cutoffs might need to be changed uh, depending on the shape of the data file that we're, that we're examining. Uh, but we can see exactly how each of these steps will uh, change the distribution uh, of our data uh, for our data set.